welcome to Sparrow's Joy. <laughs> Rebecca here, and I'm going to share with you the story behind this painting. <laughs> this painting is titled, I want to make sure I titled it right, Dream Like a River. I have to look because it was done in 2019. It was one of my earlier paintings, and I almost forgot what it's called. Well, I did forget. But it's called Dream Like a River. It was done to the song Dream Like a River by Garth Brooks. And so, where it's one of my earlier pieces, the sides aren't painted like the front. It's, they've just got the black on the sides. And some people could be like, well, why didn't you just go ahead and go back and fix it? Because by the time I knew to paint the sides, it had already been a year or so after I done the painting and I couldn't remember what colors I mixed or did to create that because the song is a dream is like a river and so I wanted it to be very unrealistic realistic in the sense of you know it talks about a river you have the mountains and the trees and, and different things but not realistic in the sense of you know, it's a dream. It can be whatever color. The mountains can be orange if I want to. The trees can be kind of purple if I want to. And since I've done this one, I have did another boat or ship painting. And someone mentioned why didn't why don't I paint over this? Since that other one has been painted, I've learned how to do boats and things a little bit better since then but I like how my sky and certain things turned out by trying to have it in a different color than what you would normally have it in real life and plus as a beginner painting if you keep some of your beginner pieces that you like and don't paint over every single one of them you're like no oh, I don't like it I won't paint over it. I get that you know some of them I have done that too but not every one because Sometimes you need some of your first beginning pieces so you can look back and see how you your boats have changed or how your trees may look now or different things. And so that's one of the reasons why I kept this piece and the way it was and didn't paint over it. Because I knew that even famous artists would paint over some of their pieces because now that they have x-ray and ultraviolet ways to look underneath the layers of paint so you can see that they have painted over some of the things at the time. Um, and so I didn't really want to do that with this piece. I wanted to leave it like it was because it was more dreamy and real and unrealistic in the sense of the way the colors are and the color scheme and everything. And a hint for anybody that watches these, there's my signature and things have changed since then. I signed in red. Some of my early pieces, my signature is done in red. Sometimes it's over in this corner or that corner when it comes to some of the earlier pieces. I did that because I was still trying to find my niche, find what a way to make my signature and the paintings my own. Because everybody signs a certain way. Like Bob Ross, he did red and he just wrote Ross. Thomas Kincaid wrote Thomas Kincaid and the year. Horace Pippin, who is another artist I admire, he put H. Pippin. So being that my name starts with an R and I'm also a Pippin, I decided to do R. Pippin but to add the year. So that way if somebody looks at it from at a quick glance, they know that it's not an H. Because of, in case it blends in with the background or something, it's not an eight because it also has the year and everything. Um, but where I was trying, I didn't want to write my whole name because my name to me feels a lot longer than Thomas Kincaid's name. So I wanted to shorten it like Quartz Pimpins just did his first initial and his last name. So I liked that and I wanted to do something like that too, but I wanted the, the year like Thomas Kincaid had put the year on his and at the time I was trying to do red like Bob Ross and 
that didn't feel like it was my style, my signature. And so, again, one of the earlier works, that's how I kind of did with the red, trying to find what works for me. Now, a lot of times, I'll sign in a color that I've used in, in the piece. Like, I would have probably did the orange or a purple or maybe even the white or something, depending on how I wanted it. And I've got a few pieces that I signed what I call my Vincent signature because Vincent Van Gogh never signed in the corners. He always signed somewhere sporadically. And so there's just one or two that I've signed somewhere else besides the corner. And some I've signed the back, but I didn't sign the painting on the front. Those are very rare. Those are more of the really small ones. But <clears throat> that's just a fun little tidbit there when it comes to signatures kind of thrown in there in this little video as well. But being that this was a first painting to a song, it's kind of taken the song literal and you see that, oh, a dream is like a river. Do Does that happen all the time now? When I still play things to, um, I more interpret the songs to how I feel the song is trying to what I'm um, the emotion that I get from the song and not trying to tell the story that the song is already telling anymore um but it's one of my earlier works and I like it being that it shows me and it encourages me to show that look how far I've improved by looking at some of my more recent works and I hope that you enjoy the stories behind the paintings as much as I like being able to share them with you. And hopefully if you go, uh, you can go to different places and see them um, purchased or if they're still available for purchase by the time you're watching these videos. Either way, I hope you enjoy it. Until uh, next time, have a great day.